a long way from truck to our secret rendezvous in the Marshall Islands. Someday it can be told just where this is. Actually, it is a magnificent new fleet anchorage, an advanced naval base that we have taken from the Japs and made secure. Now, for the first time, we, who have been operating as separate, relatively small task forces, see assembled the enormous mass of naval power. Over one million tons of American fighting steel. New carriers, new battleships, new cruisers and fleet auxiliaries in an amount which Japan could never conceive, let alone produce. That we are able to maintain supply lines over the vast distances of the Pacific is one of the miracles of this war. In the comforting presence of so much power, we relax and refresh our battle-strained nerves. Our ship's post office now does really big business. Letters for us at last from home. Letters from us friends, family. Our sensors know our collective mood, our central hopes and thoughts. The stuff is really getting out here now. I can't tell you much about it, but oh boy. And the more we get, well, the sooner I'll be seeing you. All hands are called together. Old skipper Jocko has been promoted admiral. Our new one's name is Dixie. Men, as soon as I finish talking, we are getting underway. Our fighting lady is now part of what is designated Task Force 58. As you know, our final destination is a place called Tokyo. We'll have to fight hard to get there, but when we drop our hook at Yokohama, I'm going to throw a party. All hands are cordially invited. <laughs> Task forces are built compactly now around carriers like ourselves with speedy new battle wagons at our side. The carrier skipper never leaves the bridge at sea because carriers and their planes are the first to strike the enemy or to be struck by him. Our aircraft pilots are constantly on call, for despite the mass of power spread out around us, these are still dangerous waters. Our pilots know this all too well, but it doesn't worry them now for their season. They know how. There's a lot of new faces among us, but most of these men, too, have been in action. At places like Hollandia, Millie, Jolly, Palau, Rabao, Wake, Melo. Our rear seat gunners and radio men are old hands now. Some of their faces are different, too, because there have been replacements. A lot of them have been made commissioned officers. There's a saying in the Navy that you never learn to love a carrier until she gets hurt. Well, perhaps we don't really love our fighting lady, but we've become mighty fond of her. And almost comfortable, almost at home. Occasionally, our shipboard movies bring us that one thing we crave the most, one touch of something utterly American, one deep breath of home. Like Jocko, our new skipper, Dixie, is an old hell-diving Navy pilot. Battle caps, he and Admiral Mitcher look like big league baseball managers. Northwest we steam, and never before in history has an ocean borne such a weight of naval power. Not a jetman, not a Japan's proud boast, Tsushima, was there anywhere near the force with which we now assert that this is our ocean. This is our air. 
were seeking the Japanese battle fleet to prove it. With our cruisers, our biggest new battle wagons present, we are strong enough to hope, really to hope, that we may provoke the Japanese fleet into accepting a fight. We're joined by plotting Coast Guard and Navy transports. Marines again. Oh, another amphibious assault is cooking. Patrols have spotted an enemy search plane and are after her. She's a big bird. 20-ton, four-motored Kawanishi seaplane, the kind we call Emily's. This Emily's a tough old girl. Right now, she's screaming for help and telling Tokyo by radio where we are. Hellcats are closing in on it. So long, Emily. Now that the enemy knows where we are and we know he knows, our brass hats get together on final arrangements for what may turn into another midway. Our objective, first of many in our drive through to the Philippines and China, will be the Marianas. 